Hi, and welcome to my first YouTube tutorial. I'll show you all how I made this multilayered artwork using pencil, ink, watercolor, pens, and more. This was a challenging piece to create, so I'm excited to share the process with you. But first, we go back. back. To where this artwork began, I bought this easel to sit up and paint. It's supposedly better for your back and neck. This proved to be a more difficult procedure than I had imagined though, but I didn't make it easy for myself either. You can tell how proud I am, or not. But hey, it looks pretty good, right? I like to spend some time planning out the composition before I begin any piece of art. This involves deciding where to put different components of the artwork, including the subjects, objects and background. Although I may have a general notion of how I want the finished result to look, I usually find that the creative process leads me in unforeseen directions. This makes creating art one of my favorite activities, since you never truly know where it will lead you. First, I like to sketch out the general composition of the artwork, including the hands, which can be tricky to get right. To help with this, I often take and reference my own photos. Next, I move on to the most important part of the portrait, her face. For this step, I use a variety of pencils and don't worry too much about making mistakes, since I know I'll be erasing some of it later. I just keep sketching until I'm happy with the result. That's it for the pencil sketch. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to see more videos like this. Now it's time to introduce the pro markers and fine liners that I'll be using for this portrait. These markers are new, but the fine liners are a key part of my art supplies and I've been using them for many years. Before coloring, I use a variety of warm grey pro markers on her face to lay down a good foundation of shadows and depth. After the markers have dried, I add watercolor to the portrait. This is the first time I've tried using watercolor to create skin tones, so I was a little nervous, but I'm happy with how it turned out. Hey, cool shirt. Oh, thanks. I got it from CosmicSerpentArt.com. You got prints, shirts and original artwork. You want some, right? Oh no, I'm not looking to buy anything. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Buy my merch. No. Please no. buy my merch. No. I recently purchased a set of matte acrylic paints from a local store and I have to say I've been really impressed with the depth they managed to create on my artworks. I then start to paint the light omitting from these odd shoulder pads with red and yellow watercolors. To make the light stand out even more, I layer on some yellow pencil and gouache paints. This helps to create a sense of depth and dimension within the artwork. I actually made a short video where I paint the center part of this crown, which you can find a link to in the description below. Since this lady is meant to be portrayed as royalty, I decided to use a lot of dark reds and purples on her jewelry. These colors helped to convey a sense of regality which was only fitting for a queen. I made the decision to draw both sides of the crown simultaneously to make painting it simpler. It also enabled me to work quicker and more efficiently. For the gold tones in the jewelry, I used a type of paint called Gantai Tambi. Recently I learned that this type of paint is not a true watercolor, but rather a paint with water as a base. I recently saw someone add shadows to the pencil drawings with the scalpel and I thought that looked incredibly cool. I then made the decision to test it out on top of the dried Gantai Tambi paint. It was a fun experiment and I was happy with the results. It's definitely not the last time I tried this out. 
sometimes it's good to step outside of your comfort zone and try new techniques. Since the initial line work on the portrait gets covered up by layers of paint, I go back in with my fine liners to redraw all of the details. This helps to ensure that the final result is crisp and clean, with all of the lines and details clearly visible. It's a bit time consuming, but it's worth it for the finished product. I suddenly rediscovered a little red fine liner that I had purchased about a year prior but never used. On this painting though, I chose to test it out by adding a few magical inscriptions to the lady's ring. I then paint the gems on the lady's shoulder pads. To ensure that the colors are consistent and evenly balanced, I draw both sides at the same time. To complete the lady's jewelry, I move on to painting the final gem, a large amethyst. The moment has arrived. The thing I've been dreading the most. I'm sitting here looking at pictures of cobwebs and trying to figure out how to draw one. The random, chaotic nature of them is intimidating and it could potentially ruin the entire artwork, but I'm determined to give it a try. Wish me luck. I made it. Four weeks has gone by and the artwork is finally done. This piece really took me on a journey, challenged my creative abilities and encouraged me to attempt new things. I hope this tutorial also helped you discover new techniques and what is possible when mixing media and it's not all that scary, you just have to give it a try. Letting go of perfectionism and trying new methods and mediums are two significant ways that I've developed as an artist. I used to be constantly hesitant to try new things out because I was terrified of failing and not being perfect. But I finally understood that taking chances and trying new things are the only ways to actually learn and get better. If you enjoyed this video, I have some good news for you. This is just the beginning of my YouTube journey. I plan to make a long form tutorial for every drawing I make from now on. And also for those who stayed until the end, Thank you so much and don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. <laughs> Until next time.